Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, rendering and well, modeling and rendering this magnifying glass. Uh, it's pretty simple to do and it looks pretty real. So, let's have a go. Okay, so we've got a blank cheetah document. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get all the modeling sorted out. So, we're going to start with a tube and throw that onto our scene. Just going to zoom in a little bit there. <clears throat> and change it in a radius and I'm going to bring that right out to get it to a kind of thickness I'm going to do it all by eye and um, that just looks kind of alright so close the height down as well and that's going to be the frame for our lens um, I'm going to add a few more sections into there it's not going to be quite smooth enough going around so we'll go for 60 sections there and I'm going to go with three sections for the ground I'll tell you why in a little bit I think that inner radius probably could just come in a touch again I'm just going by eye here so make yours kind of however you want it to be I'm just going with a magnifying glass that I've kind of got in my head if you're trying to model one that you've seen by all means change your model into accommodate that so that's the, the frame for the lens. The next thing we're going to do is the handle. Handle, we start with a cylinder, and we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. I'm going to do that by knowing the numbers there. I'm going to pull that over. I'm changing cameras actually. I should probably tell you that I tend to jump cameras quite a bit, uh, and I do that just by hitting my numerical keys. I've got all the cameras mapped to numerical keys, so I've got one for the main camera, two for perspective three for front, four for back, five for left, and so on and so on. So if you see me jumping cameras, that's all I'm doing. Um, if you're not sure where I'm at, it'll tell you up here. So perspective, back to camera. So just keep up with that one there. So changing to a side view. I'm gonna position that in place, roughly. I'm gonna give it a bit of extra room because I'm gonna make that a little bit longer. We need the radius right down on that. Bring that right down so it's a, just a little bit thinner than the frame. Let's have a look at that in in place. I'm just slightly intersecting that frame. That's probably not quite long enough. So let's make it 1.2. I'm just going to push it out. Mm, I don't know if that's looking. That is looking a bit long now. Maybe 1.1. I don't know, you can change this as you go. Um, like I said, I'm just going by eye here, I'm not, I'm not taking any real world measurements or anything like that. Um, that's the handle, and we've got the frame. So the handle, I'm just going to make editable by double clicking down here in the object browser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right in for the moment. I'm going to add a few ring cuts. Now I've got my cheetah shortcuts assigned to various keys, so I've got ring cut assigned to X. So I'm going to place a few ring cuts in there. Oh, done that wrong. I've done it wrong again. What am I doing? Hmm. I'm doing something wrong there. It's positioning it half white. Probably just a little bit closer. Not entirely sure why that happened actually. I'm going to place a few ring cuts around here. I'm not going to be specific as to exactly how many. Four ish, something like that. Do what you think. And what the reason I'm doing that is, what I'm going to do is I flick to edge mode uh, at the moment so I can just select edges. And I tend to do a lot of selecting with loop select and ring select. And in this instance, I'm using loop select. I've just hit L on my keyboard, which is set to loop select. If you haven't got it mapped to any keys, it's just down here selection, loop select, have control click to get that. There. And what I'm doing with the loop select is I'm actually going to leave that one off because that's the wrong one. Let's select this one, loop select again, and I'm just going to scale that one down a little bit, give a little bit of detail to this handle. So let's make it a bit smaller, make it a little bit more interesting, bring that in. Maybe do the same on this one. Again, just scaling down a little bit. And pushing it around. Bring that a little bit closer in. I'm going to put one more ring cut here. So I've just hit the X key that I've got assigned to the ring cut again. And again, I'm zoomed in too close. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, but 
what it is doing. Um, two selected there, two loops, only one more one. So I'll hit my L for loop select again, or I'll go to control selection, loop select, and I'm just going to scale that one back up a little bit. Feel free to put as much detail in on the handle as you want. Um, that'll do me. I'm happy with that. Go to town if you want. If you want to make a real antique kind of fancy magnifying glass, just just go for more detail. Um, so we've got our handle and we've got our frame. I'm actually just going to rename it now to make it a little bit simpler. So we've got a handle frame, we haven't got a lens, um, but he used an easy method for this. It's not perfect, but it will do the job. I'm going to start with a ball. Uh, because we haven't moved anything, that's kind of in the center of where we want it to be. I'm going to change the radius just slightly from 0 0.5 to 0 0.45. Try that, maybe a little bit bigger. 4.7. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to change my angle a little bit and I'm just going to scale that down. So we've got this kind of convex lens shape. Um, that's probably a little bit too much, but I'm going to leave that as a parametric object so we can change our light on if we need to. So that'll do for our lens for now. You could, there's more accurate ways of doing the lens, but for the sake of this tutorial, that'll do. So we've got our frame, we've got our lens, we've got our handle. Our handle, if you just look at my render, I've got a little bit more detail going on in the handle here. I'm going to show you how I've done that now. So I used a particle mesh to do that. Um, so I started with a cylinder, again, rotate that. 90 degrees and just push that into position over there again the radius is miles too big for what we want I just want it a little bit bigger than the actual handle that we've already got in place I'm going to shorten it a bit uh, I'm sure it's big enough for a hand to go on again I'm going by eye um, just do what you think see what looks good this is, you can always change things that's, that's the beauty of 3D. Next thing I'm going to do is add in a particle mesh tag. And that's in place. Now, particle mesh, we need to assign what the actual mesh is going to use. So it's going to use this cylinder here. So I'm going to drag that cylinder in there, and you can see that's worked because these little dots have appeared on here. So now we need to actually assign a particle. And I'm going to use a little cube, tiny little cube. That's a massive cube. That's way too big. So Select in scale option and just scaling that down and watch what happens. We start to see that we're getting somewhere roughly where we want to be, but they're only appearing at the top and the bottom. The reason they're only appearing at the top and the bottom is because we haven't got enough sections in our cylinder. Um, so selection's height, if I put 10 on there, you see, we've now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're going to need a lot more than 10, basically, is what I'm saying there. In a long way, 30, maybe a little bit more, let's try 45. It's a little bit of a render hog, this, so try and keep it to the minimum that it needs to be. 55 is looking okay. I think it'll do for this, this render. I'm going to leave it there anyway, we can change this in a little bit. Okay, so that's our magnifying glass. What I'm going to just quickly do... Just grab all these objects, just shift clicking them, and then control clicking and sticking them in a group. Okay. Glass. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to move it up a little bit. So I'm going to go into a front view or a side view. I'm just going to set it on the baseline there so I can add a floor in. Actually, I've just realised that I've missed something out. Um, a little bit earlier on when we were modelling the frame. I mentioned that I wanted to add three sections on the ground and I'm going to show you why I did that now. So I'm going to make that frame editable just by double clicking the object browser. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is select this middle loop. So I'm in polygon mode. 
I'm going to choose loop select. I'm not going to choose loop select, I'm going to choose ring select. Uh, so selection, ring select. I'm going to grab that one there, and I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to shift, click, and grab that one there. I just want to widen widen this band of polygons a little bit. So what I want to do is go to normal scale, I think it is. So I've got normal scale on, and I'm just going to click and drag to the right. Just pulling that loop of polygons a little bit wider. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to add a subdivision um, to the frame, which I'll just soften the edges. You can see it's done that. Um, it just makes it a little bit more real. When you tend to have quite harsh edges in 3D, really kind of very harsh edges, you, you notice quite quickly that they don't look that real. 